doctor in anesthesia. As anesthetic tutor, covered different aspects of anesthetics in intensive care and also involved in the teaching of postgraduate diploma students of medical college. Since 2000, uh, December, have had international anesthetic experience by working in Saudi Arabia for a year and then working in uh, United Kingdom until January 2017. As associate specialist in anesthesia and chronic pains in 2008, have been doing anesthetic sessions at least three half a days and intensive care one full day and chronic pain one full day every week. Teaching anesthesia trainees and also medical students during clinical sessions. Part of the team uh, of pain and palliative care services of Cancer Institute at AR from March 2018, March 2020. Have been working in palliative care since 2018. The area of interest include art and craft activities, read and write and converse to a reasonable extent in Sanskrit. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome to the session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much. A uh, warm welcome to all of you. And a big thank you to Pallium for giving me this opportunity uh, to go through the session on pain. <clears throat> Sinia, I will uh, share my screen from my end. Okay, ma'am, please go. Can you all see? Yes, ma'am, we can see that. Okay. Warm welcome to one and all. Um, in palliative care, pain is one of the most important symptom. So before going into in depth about managing and doing everything with pain, we need to know what is pain, why is it different, what are things that we need to know about it. So for that is what we are going to do in the next 30, 40 minutes. First and foremost, definition. We have an organization called International Association for the Study of Pain, which initially had given a definition, which existed for many, many years, uh, since 1978, 79. And... Uh, in July 2020, they had a revision or a relook on the definition. And that too was not just done like, like anything. They had a two year review with very highly um, involved professionals and various faculties and various people from different uh, sectors to redefine. And the final final or the slightly altered or reformed definition was given in July 2020 and which states that by definition pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage. So if you see in this the salient points are it's an unpleasant sensory emotional experience it could be with or without potential tissue damage. So actual nerve injury may be there or may not be there. Probable injury, like we say, shearing injury. So any of these can cause. And it is just not only sensory. Emotional component is also there. And what did they add on? They added on additionally six key notes which are important and also they looked into the etymology of the word pain. So what are the six keynotes added on? So these are the additional factors or features added on to the definition. What is it? Pain is a personal experience which has physical, biosocial, psychological elements into it. That is why it is said as a personal. So for the same pain, if you take five people, five people will respond in different ways because each one has a different personal experience. And next is that pain and nauseception 
what is pain, what is nociception has to be clearly understood because they are different, which we will see through our session. And what is patient's expression of pain? That has to be whatever it is. If one person says, I am in agony, you have to respect that. You can't say, oh, this injury, you will have this much pain only. So we cannot assume and decide what a standard for pain. Whatever the patient says or expresses, we have to respect and accept. And life experiences do have a role. For example, if someone is having pain and at the same time they have some very serious uh, emotional event happening in their life, the effect of the emotion will also be on the pain and the pain will be influenced by the emotion. So each one's personal experience at that particular time of experiencing the pain has a role in defining it and, and making it as a symptom. Next, pain is usually said to be a symptom but can become a problem too. What does that mean? Normally, for example, someone has stomach pain, abdominal pain. That shows something is not right in the abdomen. So it is a symptom generally, but sometimes it can become a problem when the pain persists. For example, someone has the same abdominal pain for three months, six months, then it becomes a disease. The first one symptom is, for example, I will give a simple symptom for all of you, appendicitis. Everyone has pain in the right iliac fossa. So that is a symptom. So appendicitis, either they may have surgery or they may have medical management. So that is how what is meant by usually said to be a symptom. When it becomes a problem, when, for example, diabetes patient has peripheral neuropathy, they have a tingling or different type of pain in both their legs and both their arms. For how long you ask? Oh, I've had it for five years. So that type of thing is a problem or disease, even though that it is the same pain present there also. Whereas in appendicitis, it is a symptom which is corrected and solved. Whereas when it is there for a long time, that itself becomes a problem and a disease. Next, verbal expression is not the only mode of expressing pain. That is, only if I say I am in pain, we can't say only then uh, that person or patient has pain. Sometimes they may not be able to speak. Still, they may be in pain. A good example for this is patients who are in ICU. They may be ventilated. They may have a tube in the mouth. They cannot speak. But still they, may, they can have pain. They do give medications to allay their pain. And there are very many ways of finding it also if they are in pain or not in pain. Uh, example for that would be sometimes they will um, have tears in their eyes. Or if we ask them to squeeze our hand, if they are in pain, they will do. So those type of, even though they cannot talk, we can still assess and find out what is their pain and treat it also. More than what I said, expression, basic, like heart rate, blood pressure. They are also directly, if someone is in pain, their heart rate will be high, respiratory rate will be high, blood pressure will be high. Vital parameters also will be affected by the pain. So, in that way also, we can find out, even though the patient is not telling you, you can still find out that the patient is in pain. This is basically a schematic representation of what the pain pathway is. For example, we'll start from the periphery. So, what is given in this picture in the periphery? For example, is you have a pinprick or an injury. So there, the injury or stimulus is the nociceptive information, like a cut or whatever is it could be. And that can vary. For example, skin, it could be cut. You take a joint, then it is stretch and mechanoreceptors which have, have an impact there. And deep, deep tissue, then it is uh, another uh, sensory input. Organs, viscera, there again, stretch is the reason or the stimulus there. So like that, you can have various types of 
nociceptors in various parts of our body. Then what happens at that place itself? Uh, many chemical mediators are released. Normally, plenty of mediators are there and uh, prostaglandin, all those things are released there which take that stimulus in a chemical form. And that message is taken through the afferent nerves to the spinal cord, to the dorsal horn, and then from there, ascending pathway, there is crossover if you see in the picture. Crossover happens at that level, and then the ascending pathways take it to the brain. In the brain, many uh, connections happen, and then you have thalamus, amygdala, many areas in the brain which are connected with pain pathway. And then you have the descending pathway. Generally, the descending pathway is one thing important to know. So descending pathway also carries it. And then finally, through the efferent nerves, it goes back. And that is how it is perceived as pain. So from the point of stimulus, this whole network or this arc, it is said, which is responsible for us perceiving the pain. This is the normal physiology, what happens. What is the significance? Why is pain so important? And why do we have to understand it well? Pain is a multidimensional and complex phenomenon that requires comprehensive ongoing assessment and effective management. So what is needed? Good knowledge is essential. So you need to know because we saw in this path itself so many things are happening. So if we don't know what is happening properly, we may not be able to treat well. So that is why good knowledge is essential. Then we'll see what is the pathophysiology. The mechanism by which a stimulus is perceived as pain in the brain is a complex one. Why is it complex? Because it is not a hardwired system. What is meant by hardwired system? Simple example I will tell. Uh, nowadays, all of us have internet connection. We have wired connection, wireless connection. Hardwired connection is something equivalent to a wired, wired, like you have connection in the wall to the modem or something. That is hardwired. Only one path it has got. Okay. But whereas the, the whole process, even though I showed you the whole system, the system is there. But in between, there may be other connections and things. That is what is said there. It is not a hardwired system, but exhibits plasticity that enables it to modify its function under different conditions which we will see a little bit more through the session today. So it is just like, for, for example, for the not hard wired is Wi-Fi you can take. You have various connections. There's no wired connection, but different types you are able to get the internet access. Like that, the nervous system also, it exhibits plasticity, means what, and modifies. It has the capacity and ability to change. Small impulse can be made big more chemical mediators can be released. All that we will see through the session, what are the changes and what are the different types in which it reacts to make it complex. Generally, pain serves the purpose to prevent tissue damage and protect the body, as I said with the example of pain with appendicitis. But under certain conditions, pain can become a maladaptive and persist as chronic pain. So when pain serves no protective function but becomes pathological, that itself is a disease on its own. So now we'll see what are the modulation mechanisms. There is something called as peripheral sensitization. That means what in the periphery, in the, in the picture that we saw, where where the impulse, where the skin impulse happens and the chemical mediators are released, at that place, many changes can happen. I'll name some of them. First one is the chemical mediators released can self-wire and release more. 
that is one one place the injury may be there but the surrounding places also can generate more mediators uh, like are you all aware of the word ectopic do you know what ectopic is anyone can answer outside from any ah, particular not very good thank you not in the usual so that is more appropriate so for example if it is to trigger in one place surrounding anywhere not that place alone other than that place so like that ectopic firing can happen and surrounding see always in nerves you have um motor sensory sympathetic everything is there in any nerve fiber you take all these strips are there so it might be a motor stimulation but sensory activize activation can happen sympathetic activation all that happens in and around that site of injury so for example i'm just telling this as number for understanding uh five chemical mediators normally to be released for that stimulus it can release 50 mediators why because of ectopic stimulation so that in the way how that happens and makes it more intense that is what is called as peripheral sensitization and then you have something called as central sensitization also central sensitization is uh what happens is in the central nervous system what happens is basically normally for one stimulus uh there is supposed to be a uh, uh, certain amount of uh, response or for this threshold there is this amount of response whereas it doesn't happen like that increase in excitability so for less threshold itself the excitability increases so basically uh, the lower thresh the threshold itself is lowered so that is one type of central sensitization and then we have something third one called as neuropathic pain so what that is whenever when as we saw in the definition it could be a direct nerve injury or a potential nerve injury there may not be an actual cut in the nerve but for example when surgery and things happen all of you will be aware we use lot of um, uh, forceps retractors what does that do it we move or try to uh, get the field of surgery clear by retracting or moving the structures to either side that can cause shearing force on the nerves which are adjacent for example artery has a nerve along with it most of the time so that shearing force can make the whole something like a even though there is no direct injury that is what is called as potential injury so these type of things can cause neuroplastic changes in the central nervous system so that what happens results in something called as a wind up mechanism wind up mechanism is what to understand simply it could it it is there are it it is amplification for example small stimulus okay what is an ampli what is an amplifier what does what is the nature of an amplifier what does it do as i said anyone can answer just it's this is all basic meaning you have heard of the word ampli amplifier or amplification what does that mean Uh, improving frequency, I think. huh? Oh my God! Uh, much frequency, like amplifier. Basically, that is one second. No amplification means to increase. 
one minute. I just uh, multiplying. I uh, know. One second. Uh, what is amplification? The increasing frequency. Ah, uh, so just increase. That is more than enough. Basically, it uh, amplify means it increases. Something small input you give. 5 decibel you give, it doesn't bring out 5 decibel, it brings out 50 decibel. All these speakers and all what you hear, they are all amplifiers. They basically, one small input you give, but it makes it big. So even pain, that is one of the mechanism which happens in our central nervous system. Small input becomes big. In that, you have, again, two types. It could be called, because all these words, when you study or read about it, you'll see wind-up mechanism, central sensitization mechanism. So, something which is, it could be a short-lived phenomenon or a short-term short amplification or a long-term amplification. So, just wind-up means it is short-term amplification. Whereas central sensitization means it is a long-term amplification. That is why, for example, you know many people, back injury, simple example I will tell. They have some injury many, many, many years ago. But that back pain stays with them until their whole life. These are all these neuroplastic changes which happen in the nervous system, which is the result for all these type of chronic persistent pain. Okay? So if you understand why it is happening, so you will come to know, oh, the patient is really in pain. So we have to find out how can we manage it. So you shouldn't think, oh, they are imagining and telling, nothing like that. Okay, then we'll go to what are the types of pain? Mm, can anyone tell what are the types? What is that you're aware of? Anyone, like uh, if they type in the chat, uh, Sinia, you may have to see and tell me because I am unable to see the chat also with the uh, presentation. So, so either you can type or unmute an answer. Generally, what are the types of pain that someone is aware of? Either you, what you have seen. Karuna has replied like phantom pain, acute pain, chronic pain. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Then we'll uh, move forward. Uh, for, we have different types of pain. One, one of them is acute pain. As I said, this uh, appendicitis or injury, any type of injury, even a child falls, immediately the child will cry. That is acute pain. Okay, and that the pathway we saw, how it happens, it is mediated by the nociceptors. Next, we have something called as chronic pain. A pain which is related to diabetes, mellitus, arthritis, tumor growth. How we say it is chronic pain? Something, any pain which is there for more than three months. That is called as chronic pain. Next is somatic pain, which is pain in deep tissues. Next, visceral pain. Pain in like organs, liver, stomach, kidney. Those type of pain is called as visceral pain because the pain is originating from the viscera. Next is neuropathic pain. This is an entirely, totally different entity. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about it. As I said, this is pain which is coming from the uh, either due to direct, um, oh, sorry, if I touch it goes and then I'm unable to go back. Sorry, dears.
okay uh, basically neuropathic pain is pain uh, which happens due to either an actual nerve injury or a potential nerve injury so and the, the whole as we saw there are very mechanism very many mechanisms which which increase the presentation and make it difficult common is diabetes mellitus okay they have they are as if you are all aware of patient they'll say some tingling type of pain numbness and that also each regional place they will have different word telling that so you need to know the local language or local term what they use because it is a pain different to normal it is not like pain when someone has injury they will say it's some heaviness some pin prick type of pain or it may be cold hot uh, it may they may have more sweating less sweating in that area sudden color change can be there or sometimes swelling can be there so all these types of symptoms or presentation is all neuropathic pain and neuropathic pain has a very large element even in cancer pain or any type of chronic pain as we saw the mechanism so far because chronic pain has got so many different type of causative mechanisms in the nervous system so this nerve pain is a very common element to be thought of and understood very well in the new nerve pain or neuropathic pain the next two what we are going to see can happen next two types there is something called as allodynia that means pain resulting from harmless stimulus what does harmless stimulus normally any stimulus some stimulus for example touch do we have do all of us have pain for touch yes or no yes ma'am so if yes, someone touches you do you have pain no ah see like otherwise you won't do hand shake at all if you are going to have pain will you all shake your hand no ma'am ah so normally for touch we don't have pain but in these type of patients when they have neuropathic pain a common complaint will be uh, my when i touch my for example they are having knee pain that is nerve neuropathic pain in the area of knee they say even accidentally my hand touches the knee i am in agony my own dress touching me or air blowing on the knee causes pain so normally all what i said air blowing or your dress touching if your your touch of the dress was causing pain none of us will buy dress for 5000 and 10000 rupees and wear so it is not a normal phenomenon but the normal touch can sometimes cause pain that is what is called as allodynia and in patients having neuropathic pain they themselves will say we need not even ask so if they tell that symptom that is like a 100% guarantee for you to take that as neuropathic pain as you all start seeing patients you will see this very common that area may have sudden redness or warmth or especially this they'll say my dress touching that part hurts so they will avoid they'll say if someone casually touches or goes past goes past my that part of the body accidentally they touch it causes pain so they'll be very protective so that is allodynia next is hyperalgesia what is hyperalgesia the word itself gives the meaning hyper means something which is more algesia is pain so for one response which should cause little pain the same response causes maximum pain for example a small pin prick will cause pain but you know the proportionality one prick how much pain it will cause whereas that one prick causes pain like agonizing pain for that person who has neuropathic pain so these two allodynia and hyperalgesia are very very common symptom of neuropathic pain so if either of them or both of them are there you have to be aware that this element is there 
So next we have to think, how am I going to manage this? Okay. And last type is referred pain. Can anyone tell me an example for referred pain? Anyone? Because when I say, you know, this is very common. Then radiate to... Radiation. Is radiate that what you say? Huh? Um, renal, uh, renal stone pain, like uh, one ah, area. Exactly. Very good. Radiation. The other person was also telling ra pain radiating from one place to another. Exactly. That's what. So the original site, only if you know the anatomy and reason, you will figure out. See, for example, like good example you gave, um, a renal colic. From the back to the front, it will come. Similarly, two, three examples I'm going to tell you. Myocardial infarction pain. What is the common thing you say? Radiating to where? Radiating to left arm. Ah, left arm. Very good. And they say sometimes it can also radiate up to the chin. No, or radiate left. to pain in a other quadrant reasons. Ah, and then another common nowadays, or many places you have keyhole surgery. Laparoscopic surgery. After surgery, where do they normally have pain? When someone has laparoscopic surgery, what do you say if after post-operative when they are going home, you can tell them oh, you can get pain in one place. What is that said normally? Anyone? Any surgeon or anyone like that in the group? Surgeon, anesthetist, anyone like that are there? Okay. Normally what happens is in all this laparoscopic surgery, plenty of, like you, how the laparoscopic surgery works. Because you're able to see because of the, uh, the uh, carbon dioxide which is insufflated into. So they after surgery, they will try to take everything out as much as possible. But still some small amount may be there. So that goes and because it is because of its nature, it goes behind the uh, liver and it goes below the diaphragm so they can have shoulder pain. Okay, so that is one of the common things. So referred pain is pain felt in an area other than the site of origin. You all gave very good examples that renal colic, uh, myocardial infarction, these are things which are very, very common. So, for example, a pain in the uh, myocardial infarction in left arm. So, is there a problem in the left arm? No. But the main problem is in the heart. But this, the nerve supply, that it is, it is going from there. Exactly referred pain is radiating pain from one to the other, from one place to another. So, it's, it is not... It is from the different area. Only if you know what it is, you will be able to uh, look into it and assess and treat further. From there, we will go on to pain assessment. So generally, uh, when someone comes and tells that they are in pain, what are the things that you will ask? Which area you have pain? Or any previous condition also we can ask. I know, first, first sentence I didn't catch. Can you repeat, please? Which area you have pain? Yes, very good. Where is the pain? Hmm. Mark frequency of pain, site of pain, and intensity of pain. Uh, pain, other aggravating, uh, whether pain is aggravating with anything or it is relaxing with any position, changing of position or anything, any stimulus that is relaxing or in increasing the pain. Very, very good. Can you tell me your name and tell where you're working and what you're working as? Uh, Ma'am, my name is Jagriti. I'm working as a CHO, uh, com hmm. Community Health Officer in Ramnagar, Nainital. Very good. Very, very organized answer you gave. See, site of pain, uh, type of pain. Then you ask for aggravating relieving factors. Anything which makes the pain worse, anything which makes the pain less 
and two three things i'm just going to add on is the pain affecting your sleep is the pain affecting your day to day activity is the pain affecting your mood is has the pain changed your personality all these happens when you see patients you will know for example you get all the information about the pain because based on that only you can treat and next what i've got in front of this slide is that what once once you know how to assess then what are the benefits and why should we do it okay so very good uh, is, is everyone clear on assessment of like first how you will ask history about the pain if anyone if anybody wants me to tell that once again i don't mind because you need to know that to move forward with not only assessment management everything that is very very essential is that clear if not please don't hesitate tell me i can take you through once again senior anything on the chat box you will have to see and tell me no yes ma'am sure if all of you are happy we can go ahead okay so next that that assessment should be methodical and we will go through and see how that assessment itself can be done properly and easily okay so why do we need to do it proper assessment of pain is essential and it also has to be reassessed regularly okay first you assess next for example you are giving some form of treatment for them you have to reassess only then you will know whether what you gave has been useful sometimes what you have given may not be useful also that also is possible so in that case only if you reassess you will know whether the patient is getting any benefit getting better or staying the same or being getting worse also so only if we assess we will know the response and also our treatment delivery can also be to the appropriate level so regular assessment and reassessment is needed and for in that point of view there are two important reasons why it has to be done one is as i said to know whether the patient is improving or not next one generally to as a as a means of knowing the um uh, performance level of your own organization you are seeing so many patients all of you are just seeing only if you assess and audit that and see oh am i doing a good service or not so only if you check and see that it will give you a reflection and also what you check and do will be will not only be useful for you and your current patients if all the data is available it will be useful for many 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 generations of patients to come okay so just the assessment is not a easy simple thing it has so much of weightage so it has to be done properly and also has to be done reassessed and done regularly too okay and in that nursing team has an essential role in this because many times the doctor may see first time second time then after that there may be all of you if you are in government setup how many patients you see you see hundreds of patients and so many new patients will be seen every time the doctor may not be able to see just why not because she doesn't want he or she doesn't want the workload is so high so the nurses take the role of uh, follow up so all of everyone should know how to assess how to find out and then if everyone is aware of that the whole team and the, the whole population gets the benefit so nursing team has an essential role in this as patients are seen regularly and at times more often by the nursing team hence this has to be understood appropriately and adequately so any doubt so far so this is what we saw already okay so describing pain you see what is the site nature extent aggravating relieving factors whether as i said impinging on routine you have to ask in that sleep daily routine 
and mood or personality. So next comes, what are the assessment tools that are available? Okay. We have separate or different tools for acute pain and different tools for chronic pain. For acute pain, you have something called the numerical rating scale. Or, uh, see, numerical rating, it means it's just the meaning of what it says. By numbers, how they are rated. Uh, for example, see, by, by telling some numbers, you ask them, for example, no, all of you will be following, zero is no pain. And then 10 is maximum pain. If I would ask you to score your pain between 0 and 10, what would you say? So say it could be 0 to 10, 0 to 100, anything it could be. And you, or you can also say uh, as, a, as words, mild pain, moderate pain, severe pain. So you can match the number and the words also. And then you have visual analog rating scale where you have faces, depiction, sad, happy, that also can be done. Then next you have something called as a dynamic pain assessment, especially assessing someone when you do, when they do movements, do they have pain? Because many times what they say, when I'm not doing anything, I'm not having pain at all. Once I start, get up, walk or do anything, my pain is extremely bad. So that is called as a dynamic pain assessment. So these are all for acute pain. Similarly, you have something for chronic pain too. For chronic pain, you have something called as the brief pain inventory. What happens when you go into chronic pain? You have a, an extensive assessment tool or chart. For each symptom, they say you ask whether it is mild, moderate, severe. And then you ask them to explain or describe that little bit more. Uh, it was intense. It was uh, short-lived. Uh, it was pricking, throbbing. Like that, you add on. There are about 30 to 40 terms which are in all these type of inventory, which help you to know more about it. Like one, one such only is the Mag McGill pain questionnaire. This again... They have multiple questions telling in, in particular about each thing and finding out more from the patient with regard to each type of pain. And also you have disease-specific multidimensional questionnaires. For example, diabetic patients, they will have more pain in the peripheries. They will have uh, pain in their fingers. They may have additional uh, elements in their, in their feet and all some hardness, change in skin nature, wounds, pain in and around the wounds. So, so many additional factors, for example, diabetes, dementia, different type of pains, some may not be able to express. Even for those type of patients, there are specific tools. See, I can go on listing tools. I have not done that. Why? Because you have to use something which is useful for your local area. Just me telling 100 things may not help. So you have to tailor make, we say. You have to make some type of simple tool using these as guide to help you to assess the pain. So one such, what I'm going to show next. This is a chart which has, which has a picture of front and back. Normally, this is very, very well accepted by most of the patients, even if they cannot talk. You just give them or show them this and ask them to tell where are the areas of pain. And then in that you can mark. And then you can say, does the pain go from here to somewhere else? So then you can put extension. You can put different, uh, if it is extension, you can put a different color. Okay. And first time, that's all. You have front of the body, back of the body. So individually you can mark everything. So in that also, for doing reassessment, first time you can use one color, okay? Second time, for example, their pain was in a very wide area around umbilicus for five centimeter diameter. You gave some medicine. 
from 5 cm diameter, it has come down to 2 cm diameter. So when they come back next, you can use a different color. So one chart itself you can use as an aid for further assessments also. So these are simple ones. Anyone, they need not be highly educated to mark in this chart. Either they can mark by themselves or they can tell you and you can mark. So those options are there. And these are some basic tools which are helpful for anyone and everyone. So it is not something highly complicated. Uh, just showing this, uh, they will also feel comfortable to denote where are the areas of pain. So these are the various tools which I mentioned. Uh, like the facial representation and you have the numerical one also in it. And you have the uh, descriptive words also, mild, tolerable, distressing, very intense, excruciating or unbearable pain, unimaginable pain. All these you can, like I've depicted all in one in this. Next comes cancer pain. What is the importance or what is that that's different in cancer pain? Major impact of cancer pain assessment and management happened after the WHO guidance in 1986. But even though that guidance was done in 1986, but still many, many people feel that satisfactory level of management is not achieved in many parts of the world. Mainly why? Due to still there is no easy availability. So still there is non-availability of analytics. Many places, see for example, main countries may have, but the area where the patient is, either a rural area or very remote area, where the patient is, they may not have easy access to that place. So the painkiller or analgesic may be present in a bigger hospital, but that reaching the needy to their own area is where there is trouble. So that is only mentioned as non-availability of analgesics. So even though WHO guidance comes, they made uh, drugs available, but still it is not reaching the person who needs it. So that is where all of us have to work hard and see how can we make that possible? How can we help in the delivery from where it is available to where it is needed? With regard to cancer pain, we have something called as the Edmonton Assessment 2. This also has many features of what we have seen so far. But it has some additional factors also. Okay. So if you see, if whenever you consider about um, cancer pain, uh, pain and breathlessness or shortness of breath is said to be like 80 to 85 percent common symptom in cancer management. So these two form a big chunk. All of you will know, yeah, nearly any, any cancer patient you see, either they will be having pain or they'll be breathless. They will have other symptoms. I'm not telling they will have only pain and breathlessness. Okay, They, will, they may have all other things that is mentioned here. Activity means they may not be able to do their own activities, self-care, self, uh, self daily, uh, their own daily activities. They may not be able to do that. So they may have impingement in that. They may have nausea and vomiting, which is a very, very common problem. It could be either due to the disease per se or due to their chemotherapy. Many times chemo, radiation, all have very common side effect of nausea vomiting. And with their reduced activity, unable to do uh, things for themselves, they feel so helpless and that leads to depression. Depression and anxiety. How will I cope? How will I manage? Will I be like this all the time? So all that is a very common presentation. And drowsiness, their disease per se makes them weak, frail. 
they are not able to do anything for themselves mainly not that they are intentionally not wanting to do they are so cachectic they don't have baseline energy their protein levels and all you see it will be very very low so they don't have muscle mass they don't have the capacity and ability to do so that makes them more more tired drowsy anxious and uh, doesn't give them a good feeling okay and appetite we most of us know loss of weight loss of appetite is the oldest gold standard symptom even today that holds good and they don't have sense of well being in themselves okay all these will be along with pain and breathlessness pain and breathlessness are said to cover like 80 to 90% of the um common symptom that they face so that is why we have to try and make sure how can we be able to give some relief with these two main symptom so for doing that first you need to know what is pain how does it work why is it making so much of an issue if you know that then we can go accordingly with the management of it okay so with that we will come to an end of this uh, presentation we'll come out we, you can come out of this presentation screen senior and if anybody wants we can go back uh, first come out of this and then we okay ma'am anyone wants to ask any question either um, uh, type or um, unmute and ask anything is fine but see uh, better that it is a interactive session because no point um, in having queries and doubts and uh, Anyone who wants to ask anything, you can go ahead. Any of the, uh, we will share the um, presentation to you. Any slide or anything you want me to explain once again, also we can do. And can I know how many of you, anyone already working in palliative care? Uh, Ma'am, uh, these are the community healthcare officials joined from the NHM Uttarakhand. Mm. So, do they have a palliative care set up already there? I think no, they are planning to have some palliative care set up and they are planning to train their community healthcare officials. Okay, okay. Um, because there, there are community health officers in this group, no? There are uh, bo both community health officers and uh, other allied professionals. Am I right? I'm only community care officers. There are all, some doctors and nurses. Some of them are. Yes, some of them are. All community health. Uh, yes, all of them. CHO, some are doctors, some. Yes, exclusively for them. Ah, so that's all. So, okay, you're all planning to start a service. Is that right? Can any one doctor tell me what is the um, probable. Uh, aim or objective dr vaishali but you can see some anyone any one of you can uh, tell me feel free or like, see, uh, you need not have any apprehension or anything like that. See, this is a platform where we are here to help you. And only it will be better if you come up with your queries and clarifications so that you go with a feeling that you have, uh, you have clear uh, insight on whatever you have come to gather. Uh, 
पैलेटिव केयर मीन्स मैम इम्प्रूव द क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ मीन्स की हाउ वी कैन मैनेज द हाउ वी कैन गिव एनी पेशेंट क्वालिटी ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट क्वालिटी ऑफ केयर फॉर द बेटर फॉर द बेटरमेंट इन हेल्थ exactly very very well said really nice to hear something like this see very many people even awareness about palliative care is not there okay still people think palliative care is end of it whereas you give such a lovely um, definition okay providing symptomatic care providing better quality of life providing better lifestyle for them as much as possible by uh caring for them and easing alleviating we say alleviating suffering yeah ma'am thank you ah uh, very good uh your pankaj yes ma'am right? pankaj joshi pankaj joshi yes. where from are you ma'am i am from pithoragarh work hmm? as a community health officer in pithoragarh uttarakhand ma'am okay, okay okay very nice see uh, people like you only like can take it forward first first and foremost we that is why we say we need to understand yes, what we are doing uh, and then see main thing no why like government setup is trying to train you all is that for example i've been telling this again and again if we train 50 people that 50 can multiply to 50 lakhs also okay 50 to 500 500 to 5000 5000 50000 so see you can go train all staff in your setup and then your all staff for example you have 50 staff under you you train all 50 of them that 50 of them can go train another like community health nurse like you you will have field workers field nurses so like that it can go as a vicious circle it can go on and on only then what i said no who is now able to get the medicine but it's still not raising reaching the needy only when training goes on and on in a vicious circle from one to the other that aim or objective can be achieved at least we just can't keep on dreaming uh, without implementing something so from that point of view if you ask um, once training is imparted to all of you you can further take this training further by imparting this knowledge to your team and that team can go on doing it further very good so any specific thing that you didn't understand want me to explain once again or anything like that do they have case presentation uh, senior Uh, no ma'am <coughs> we are planning to ask for case presentations but uh, we we don't have one for today ah uh, okay for the rest of the sessions you are planning to have yes yes we are planning to have that will be better because uh, um more right uh, inter- uh, more in uh, can you please uh, can you please tell them about the case presentation too mm hmm explain thank okay. you okay so um what 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 i am trying to ask her is see for example um we'll take a uh, gastrointestinal symptom okay i'm just picking up this example to tell you how you can bring up cases and then we can have discussion of the case to understand more about it we picked up gastrointestinal symptoms what are the gastrointestinal symptoms that can come up in a palliative care patient anyone can say see first ma'am abdominal pain very good ma'am vomiting vomiting correct okay so like this so abdominal pain vomiting nausea so you pick up any patient uh see at present maybe because none of you are in uh, palliative care if there is any history uh see you may not be providing palliative care but you may be having patients uh with cancer or you may be having patients with long term neurological disease so you all had the first session no what is palliative care there this is the second session right senior yes ma'am ah uh, so you've all had 
your introductory session on palliative care. So you will all know now what all, where all palliative care can be given. So you can pick up cases from any of that, but which has any of these symptoms, gastro, as you all mentioned, either vomiting, diarrhea, or nausea, anything. For example, someone is in chemotherapy and post-chemotherapy nausea vomiting is very, very common. So I that is one example. So you pick up a patient um, full information like that, write down, like make a make few slides. For that, Palium will uh, share you a model uh, type of thing, like um, empty, you can have of your own also, or they will uh, just guide you. Nowadays, all of you will be computer and tech savvy, okay? Because all of you will be on your phone, on Google, finding the whole world. So you will all know to do all these presentations very well. If not, also don't worry. You can get the help of Palim if you want. The IIT team may at least tell you, or send you one sample. So prepare just four or five slides. Okay, what are the symptoms? Uh, what is uh, symptom presenting illness? Same as you've all done when you studied. And then uh, write about um, what is the what are, what was the management done? Uh, any investigations done? And then you write what are what are the ma management options you took? And next, what are the what were the main concerns for you? And what are your queries? What is that you want to know more from that? Senior, maybe it will be worthwhile sharing with them one template presentation. Sure, we'll be sharing one, ma'am. Sharing mm. one model presentation. Mm. That's all. Okay. As I said, you need not make 15, 20 slides. 5 to 10 slides, more than enough. Okay, because if you bring up a case, we are all used to know. We are all, everyone has one style. So we are used to seeing patients and dealing with them. That is that is what makes you more comfortable. So if we have one case discussion also, we can talk and discuss a little bit more than what we do just with the uh, topic presentation. So please, all of you, see, they, they would have shared you the whole um, schedule. So if it is the, the topic of the day is gastrointestinal symptom, you bring a case relating to that. So all of you can pick up whatever you can and get in touch with the um, team telling that, for example, I'm just telling, it's not um, Aradhana Joshi says, I will do GI. And then Dr. Deepa, Deepak Chaudhary says, I can do um, respiratory. Something like that. Okay. I just randomly picked up these names. No one to get offended or anything like that. So it's just an example. So if you do that, one is will throw more light for yourself. And you, when you take up and write about the patient, you can put whatever management was done. Uh, this is what was done. And these are my queries. What are the concern? And then take it from there. So now, for example, pain itself, I'll say. I said pain is not only physical, emotional, psychological, social, spiritual. All four components it has. Any pain you take, it should have physical, psychological, social, emotional, and spiritual. All four components are there in pain. There is no one thing. That is what we call as total pain. Okay. So this total pain is what? So when, when for example, uh, even I am telling nausea vomiting what we took. Uh, is a patient, ex-patient. She has, um, uh, the patient is the breadwinner, has two children and wife. Uh, so even though pain will be there or vomiting will be there, they will have other concerns. How will I look after my child? How will I, uh, how will the family survive? So this financial and social, emotional, and very, very let down. Oh, I, I was the breadwinner. I'm feeling very upset. I'm not doing my duty well. So that is an emotional element. So when you write the case, you will, you will add on. Whenever the patient is a person, no, is not a case sheet or case note. 
so when you get the information you you will have all that also so in your concern you will also have these things so it has multiple elements and uh, in your topics itself you will have one day you will have psychosocial element uh, so like that you have various headings you pick up case appropriate to the topic of the day and make a simple short presentation is that clear anybody wants more explanation for that please go ahead and uh, as sinya has mentioned she will share uh, one model presentation for you all to keep as a template so that uh, you can also prepare because when you bring up cases it will be more helpful for you you will all understand and uh, feel the difference also anybody wants to ask any queries was that all clear or was that nothing clear only two ways of um, two outcomes for this i tried to be as slow and uh, clear as possible because language barriers also sometimes can be there clear map oh very good someone has said all clear thank you surabhi uh, even pankaj joshi has mentioned all clear very good thank you very much see because this is a basic foundation okay uh, if you have doubts uh, yes many have uh, responded also manish is that right manish thank you so basically because your foundation or the, these topics have to be clear so that you build ah uh, yes we are getting a point very good uh, so because only if you understand and move forward furthermore also all these sessions no they are all fully packed with information so every day more and more information you'll be getting so each day whatever you attend better get that cleared up on the day because next day some more fully fresh new information will be coming for you in your next session i meant so like that clarify uh, as as and when needed and you have both the uh, like you you have like see next is amongst all of you also try to interact and uh, have some clarifications and more you you get to know more people and then when more people discuss more clarity comes more knowledge sharing happens so please do that also which will be helpful for for all of you in that case i will um, pass it on to you senior and uh, both of you to take it forward from there thank you ma'am thank you for the wonderful informative session and thank you for joining ma'am uh, hope you have uh, like got all information about today's topic if you have any doubt you can uh, put it on the uh, like uh, whatsapp group so that we can uh, proceed further and clarify your doubt doubts um, so we can wind up the session over to you sinya thank you all for joining for today's session thank you mrada ma'am for that wonderful session presentation so uh, we will be having our next session on this friday on coming friday with mrada ma'am again on pain thank you all for joining hope hope to see you all on the next session bye bye thank you once again good luck to all of you